Hello and welcome to uh, a video series on 3D interactive visualizations. Um, this, this series will consist of uh, three parts and in this part one we will primarily be focusing on the basics of uh, 3D interactive visualizations and we will also see um, how for example high dimensional data can be reduced to uh, low dimensional for example three dimensional spaces and then how can we visualize particularly the classification data, the discriminant information and stuff like so. And primarily uh, for this part we will be using Plotly package that is very very powerful package for interactive visualizations both for 2D and 3D. Um, so let's dive in and um, have some uh, fun with this Plotly. So first of all we uh, import Plotly dot express spx by the way um, uh, plotly normally is not installed uh, with the site packages you have to install it so let me so you can install it using uh, pip or conda either way so for example pip install plotly or you can uh, you can replace this pip with conda for uh, if you have anaconda installation either way uh, Conda actually um, actually made uh, different installations uh, variant compatibility it actually controls the variant compatibility and, and stuff like so. So either way uh, you can install uh, Plotly. Once Plotly is installed you have uh, this command import Plotly as Express. Uh, uh, Plotly has a lot of uh, modules inside Express uh, module uh, graph objects and so on. Uh, in this particular video we will be primarily focusing on um, express object, express module. So more uh, we may need pandas import pandas spd and numpy should always be imported when you're working with data science it is needed somewhere one way or the other it is needed somewhere. Okay. So now that we have our um, packages available, um, let's 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 make a dummy program to 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 just let let's uh, make a synthetic visualization just to get a look and feel of what do we really mean by uh, interactive visualization. So for that, uh, let me create a data frame pd dot data frame and. <clears throat> Let me uh, create the data frame. Let's say column X is np dot random dot rand, and let's generate fifty values, fifty random values. Um, then let's generate a Y, another column np dot random dot rand. Let's say again we have uh, fifty numbers in that. Um, next we generate another uh, column with with name Z. Let's say np dot random dot rand uh, again 50 by the way here I just 50 it should be 50 okay next uh, let's say uh, this data is a classification data and it has some classes uh, and the class column is C let's say np dot random dot rand um, let rand int let's say it's a classification data so it is rand int and I want to generate random integers from 0 to 4. Basically, there are four classes with labels 0, 1, 2, and 3, let's say. And let's say I want to generate 50, uh, 50 uh, samples. So uh, this C will contain 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, the labels randomly. So that's our data frame uh, generated. Let's, let's see the data frame, df. Uh, if you see the data frame, it looks like this is the x value, this is the y value, this is z value, and that's the class label. That's the x value, that's the y value, that's the z value, and that's the class label if we consider this as a classification data. Now, if you see this data has, uh, <clears throat> uh, in terms of machine learning models or data science models, uh, we can think of that this data has basically three features, uh, x feature, y feature, z feature, and one class label. So that means the feature space is uh, three-dimensional. Maybe we are able to plot this data in, um, uh, in, in three-dimensional space. And that's where this uh, Plotly comes in. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, for 3D visualization there is only Plotly. There are other packages as well. 
Um, I mean, for example, you can do uh, 3D plotting with Matplotlib, straightforward, no problem. But Plotly gives you interaction with, uh, with the plot, as we will see shortly. Uh, again, uh, this is not uh, the only package for uh, interactive plotting, but it's, it is really a great and uh, famous package. So, <clears throat> so figure px dot uh, scatter. Let's say we have a scatter three D plot, scatter three D um, df. X is column x, y variable y variable is column y, z attribute or z variable is column z, and then we have to specify the color class if we really want different points of different classes to be assigned with different colors. So color property, let's say, let's set the color property as C. And then what we do is we say figure.show and it should open up a, a plot in front of us. So let's see, yeah, so that's the plot. So you can now see uh, different um, classes, they are assigned different colors, yeah. So we have four different colors here. Uh, first of all, you can see if you go to any any point, uh, you can have its x value, y value, z value, as lo as well as the class label. If you go to this blue blue dot, you have x y z and the class label, x y z and the class label, and so on. Further, uh, we can we can interact with this plot like so. Um, yeah, so we can we can have all kind of interactions. We can uh, zoom in, zoom out to the plot. We can have zoom in, zoom out, and then we can have rotations, uh, like so and so on. Uh, and it mostly becomes handy when we are uh, dealing with data and we are visualizing the data. Um, so in, 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 in several cases in classification or regression, even when clustering, uh, we may want to visualize the data. And because it is hard to visualize more than three dimensions, one look and feel of the data comes uh, when you uh, drag your dimensions to three dimensions, maybe by selecting some salient features or maybe using feature transformation. Uh, and then maybe you visualize the data and you get some kind of information about the, um, about the, um, about the discriminant information in different features based on classification or regression or whatever task that is underlying. For example, let me, let me give you an example for that. Just, just think about iris data. So import Seaborn as SNS. Um, so iris is SNS dot uh, load data set. Let's say iris. That's our data set, for example. And iris dot head, if you see, uh, it has four attributes and one class label. Obviously, we cannot, um, we cannot visualize the four dimensional data. So for example, if we just think about um, displaying the data by just three of the attributes, and let's see what these attributes are. For example, let's say we, re we say, okay, um, uh, px dot scatter, scatter 3D, for example, um, iris, x is equal to, let's say, uh, let's say we have this uh, simple length, let's say that's our x-axis. Just select three of these randomly or automatically. Simple length, let's say y is, let's say, um, petal length, And then we have, let's say, z is, uh, let's say, petal width. And we also have color. So color is, let's say, species, to just assign uh, different colors to these species. Let's say these species. Yeah, so this. Um, and we can then have that figure. So we can then have figure dot show, just to just to know whether petal length, petal width, and sepal length, they can discriminate different species or not. Just let's see that. So if you see here, um, 
uh, setosa is assigned a blue color, versicular is assigned a red color, and virginica is assigned a green color. And um, if you go to each of these um, points, you'll be having different sepal length value, petal width, va uh, petal width value, and petal length value, as well as uh, the uh, species value. Not only that, you can just rotate the graph, this graph, and you can see um, whether the different data points they are well separated or not if we just for example if we just choose uh, if we just choose for example uh, the sepal length petal length and petal width uh, out of the four features or consider a data set with much more than four features and we select certain features um, maybe those features are informative relevant or not so here in this particular case you can see that um, they look like uh, relevant uh, we can we can select for example we can select features um, not by not by trying that which three we want to pick maybe we can apply a sophisticated feature selection method for example um, using select k best so from sklearn dot feature selection um, import select k best um, we can apply this model as well, where MDL. So let's say we have Y is equal to iris dot species. That's our Y. And let's say X is uh, iris uh, dot drop um, species. Um, um, and this is X is equals to one and let's say we have these we see x not head uh, it has no species information similarly we see y uh, these are the labels we can further um, convert these to np arrays as array np array and we can convert the following into numpy array as well num as array And uh, yeah, so now we can select certain different features out of, of from this X. Let's say we select three features. So our model is uh, select K best, whichever best it can pick three uh, from the data. And we have, let's say X new equals to um, MDL model.fit transform transform x y and now we have x new available um, if you can if you now see x new dot shape we'll be having best three features available whatever they are uh, I mean um, we, he in, in the previous example we picked the feature without any information we just picked three of those let's say we want uh, let's say we deploy a specific criteria uh, to select the best features for for this particular data set and these are the three features if we now want to see uh, how important or how relevant these features are so how can how can we how can we do that so let's df2 is pd dot data frame pd dot data frame let's say x is x new the first column of x new which is this then y is uh, the second column of this x new which is index at one and z might be the third column in this data set so let's say that's our uh, data frame so we generate this data frame let's see if data frame is generated properly yes then we say okay p, uh, figure is equal to px dot uh, scatter 3d df2 um, x is equal to uh, oh by the way when we were building here this data frame we should also build a class column as well so class column let's say is uh, y that's the class column yeah so that is also generated there as a, as a class column so uh, x is equal to capital X, 
the column y is equal to capital y the column and z is equal to capital z as the column now we do not know uh, in x y and z what three attributes it has retained although we can find that out but we have selected some uh, we have selected three most relevant features with respect to certain filter criteria in this particular case uh, the filter cr criteria is f class if the f score okay so and then we can have this color uh, specified by this class if we now if we now show the figure oh what's the problem scatter 3d um, z why oh it's small z um, okay so if you now see um, I guess uh, it has selected uh, the same kind of features that we were selecting earlier because it looks like the plot is much like the same as we as we saw earlier but in this particular case um, uh, it has it has selected I mean the plot uh, it, it has selected the features um, with respect to a particular filter criteria and now we can see that if we if we select these features the classes they will become um, uh, the classes will become really um, well separated and we can apply uh, um, I mean any multi classifier or binary classifier multiple times to separate this RS data so it gives us a look and feel of uh, what is happening so further you can see you point out at any data point and you get the information and you have these uh, rotations um, you have these zoom in zoom out effects like so and these kind of interactions uh, you can do that with with this graph um, th this is the built-in data let me let me show you some of the uh, results on um, on on some some real data that's also real data but that's built-in data let me give you a result on uh, swam behavior data set let uh, the data set is located somewhere here it's a binary classification data so let me pick that um, so yeah so df is equal to pd dot read csv uh, r is this the data i guess has been uh, read so df dot head that's the data if i just show you the data uh, this particular data has has around um, six thousand uh, records or data points and with mm, with around more than more than two thousand dimensions we cannot obviously view this data. Um, the, the problem is this data is extremely high dimensional. But maybe we can, we, can, we can reduce its dimensions using some sophisticated methods, and then we can view the data um, as, as, we, as we did with this iris data. So let's do that. Y is equal to, let's say np dot as, as array. Um, df dot class, that's the class attribute df dot class x is equal to np dot as array uh, df df dot drop class x is equals to one if you do that an x dot shape if you see the shape of x that appears to be this now what we can do is we can apply some uh, sophisticated method, maybe a pipeline or stuff like so. Uh, for example, we can apply, um, I mean, we can apply a pipeline, for example. What we do, we, we, can, we can have uh, a pipeline as well. So from sklearn.pipeline, import make pipeline. Pipe. Oh, this is this is not a correct spelling here. Pipe line. So we have this. Then we can have this make pipeline. Okay. So we have that. What we do is we set our model, um, and we say okay, make pipeline. Make pipeline by first applying select k best, 
and select for example uh, 100 best and then apply uh, PCA with number of components let's say uh, we haven't loaded PCA so from sklearn dot decomposition import PCA so we have done that there are so many other dimensionality reduction techniques um, maybe PCA is good maybe not good but I'm just giving you an example so this model will first pass the data to this particular model that will select the 100 best features and then the resultant will be passed to PCA which in turn will select the three best components and then um, x new is uh, mdl dot fit transform fit transform x and y that we have seen earlier after fitting this transform uh, we can then have simply the same code as earlier uh, we can build a, we can build a data frame because it is required by uh, it is required the data frame is the first argument for this uh, plotly express a scatter 3d and then we can have just this copied and we can paste it here and we are good to go so what is happening here is we have 24,000 dimensional data and we are projecting that data into three-dimensional space in a cascade style. We first uh, go through feature selection phase and then we go through feature extraction phase, but the resultant value x new has only three features. Then we just saw these features with respect to their class labels as well. This, whether this particular uh, pipeline of dimensionality reduction, uh, is it visually, uh, is, is it feasible uh, for the data for good discrimination or not. Obviously, we are reducing the dimensions a lot, but the problem is uh, uh, if we have more than three dimensions, we cannot visualize those. So it is just giving, it will just give us a hint how the data looks like, um, but obviously um, one could, if one could have a visualization that is more than 3D, if possible, then we might have uh, more power to not reduce to the not reduce the dimensions directly to three, but staying more than three. So, oh, there's a problem. No problem. Um, the score function is not callable. What score function? Uh, fit transform. Uh, oh, that is k equals ten. Okay. So, if you now see this is what the plot looks like these are different so so this yellow class this yellow is class one and this blue is class zero and it just mixed up all the data uh, that is which means um, this may not be a very good um, so if if we reduce the dimensions this much in this particular pipeline that mod, that may not be very good for um, for for classification behavior on the other hand, if we, uh, for example, apply kernel PCA, things may change with kernel, let's say, kernel is equal to RBF, which is a Gaussian kernel. Things may then, uh, oh, what's the problem now? Oh, we haven't loaded this kernel PCA. So we apply that, we apply this. So if you apply this kernel PCA, it may take some time but may give results that are, oh, you can see the results, oh my God. Um, so can you see this? This class one data and class two data uh, with the kernel PCA, they are, they are discriminative. All, all, all we have to do now is to come up with a nonlinear classifier boundary uh, that actually will separate uh, these uh, portions of the data. Yeah, so can you see that? Yeah. Here is, um, so th this, this gives us the information that data indeed has, uh, data indeed has uh, discriminant information. All we have to do is to come up with an appropriate model that helps uh, finding out that, um, that particular pattern that is there inside the data. Not only kernel PCA, you can go to manifold learning, for example, MDS isomap, locally linear embedding, TSNE spectral embedding. There are several others. 
um, or, or you may go for sophisticated feature selection techniques. This is just the filter based. You can go to other methods like wrapper and embedded methods. But the, the goal here is to somehow uh, project your high dimensional space to lower dimensions to get a look and feel of what the data is doing. Um, as a closing note, I, I should say that uh, you should visit uh, embedding projector in TensorFlow. Um, that is much cool uh, visualize much cooler visualization tool, um, and it has a lot of support both for categorical and non-categorical data, and it has some built-in uh, dimensionality reduction methods like TSNE and PCA. So um, th that is much cooler, by the way. Uh, you can build your own embeddings, um, but if you if you visit that um, uh, embedding projector, you'll be much uh, much much uh, astonished that. That's a great tool. But at the end of the day, in, even in that um, embedding projector, uh, this, this kind of support is available. I mean, that's the support that mostly people need, yeah. On top of that, this has a lot of, um, embedding projector has a lot of other searching features and customizing features. Um, but this particular support, the interaction with the plot and with respect to interaction, the values that you get, uh, that support makes embedding projector much more useful uh, in most of the data science tasks, which I'm now showing here uh, is also possible in Plotly up to some extent. Uh, it is also possible in, in Plotly. So that's about this video. In the next video, we'll be probably talking about um, decision surfaces, the three-dimensional decision surfaces, uh, both in regression and in classification problems. So hope to see you in the next part of this video. Thank you.